Both Ned Smith and Ding Darling are kind of cut from the same cloth. They're both self-taught artists. Um, they both took kind of unusual career paths for their day. Um, they've both left legacies that have extended long, long past their lives. Um, you know, Ned was a, was a friend and colleague of mine before his death in 1985, and I know that he respected Ding Darling tremendously. We often talked about the impact that the duck stamp and the National Wildlife Refuge System and, um, you know, the, 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 the federal government's move toward conservation during the, the Roosevelt administration in the years after, what, a, what an impact that had. So um, there's a real sense of symmetry in having this Ding Darling exhibit here at the Ned Smith Center for Nature and Art. Uh, my first reaction was I was sort of overwhelmed by the volume of the materials, which was really exciting, um, but also I sort of couldn't picture how it was going to come together into a finished exhibition, but um, it was really exciting to see it go from boxes and a day of inventorying um, to what is here now. I'm also really excited that we were able to create Darling's workspace using Ned Smith's um, desk and chair and easel. One of our founders was visiting the other day as we were setting up and she just was so thrilled to see his desk and his chair um, out from storage so that people can see and experience them. So that's also really exciting too. But the whole thing is just, it's just magnificent. Well, there were a lot of surprises as we looked at this, at the content as it was going up. This is way more than a cartoonist. This is way more than somebody that's interested in conservation. He's managed to marry the two and take it to a whole different level, um, something that we've lost, actually. Uh, you know, it, it came to uh, a head with, with uh, his maturity and the cartoons that he did probably right up until his death. And then I think that uh, we had Earth Day in the 70s, and then we've been on a slow slide down the wrong side of the hill since then. I think, the, I think the most pleasant surprise was the amount of playful artwork from the times in Ding's life when he was not on a deadline and not working for, you know, not, not trying to, to push a message or a cause, but just simply having fun as an artist, you know, the, 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 um, uh, some of the natural history arts, some of the, um, the wildlife, some of the, the um, fishing and hunting scenes, some of his travel scenes. Um, there's just a looseness and a vibrancy and, and a fun about them that I wasn't expecting. The Ding Darling works, I, I was quite surprised and very pleasantly surprised by the quality of the work and the, the breadth of the work, the variety. His humor comes through, uh, the humanity in his cartoons. He, he's a uh, uh, obviously a very thoughtful and caring person. Um, his art's fantastic and it's very accessible. It, it feels very comfortable. I think the, the cartoons are, are particularly uh, interesting for me. I was, I'm a mechanical engineer by trade and I worked in the newspaper printing press uh, area for a large portion of my career. And uh, so it's fun to see things that are kind of derivative from newspapers. And also from the political side, uh, it's always interesting to see how um, cartoons from decades, even a century ago, you know, are pertinent today. One of the biggest things I hope children get to take away from this, um, and it's a message I try to teach to the kids, is that it's okay to not know, it's okay to fail, it's okay to struggle with things, but to be patient, take it in stride, keep going. Um, as you look around the exhibit, there are plenty of pieces that I mean, I consider great, amazing art. And you can see the, the steps and how he goes through the process, and that's really important for kids to see. So I hope that's one of the things they can take away, is just, it's okay and to strive and pursue and, and do great things. One of the things I would hope that if you know, a young person coming into this exhibit would, would, would take away is, um, first of all, the sense that art is fun because it's clear that Ding Darling had an awful lot of fun with his, with his art, even when he was skewering powerful people and making important political points. Um, and also the point 
I hope they come away with the point that um, that anybody can make a difference. I mean, here's here's a man who probably did not get up in the morning one day and say, I'm going to alter the face of conservation in North America for the better. And he, but he did. Um, you know, he opportunity presented itself, and and if if I've learned anything about Ding Darling is that he never let opportunity pass by. He grabbed it with by the lapels with both hands. And, um, and that's, a, that's a potent message for kids, that no matter, no matter what your interests are and no matter where your strengths lie, um, you can find a way to do important work. Um, he did with a, with a pen, he did as a government official, and um, we're grateful for that legacy all these years later.